大家好，中级英文课第六周。我叫 Warren， 我是你的英文老师。This is lesson six. I will cover travel and sightseeing. I will also cover another grammar point: adverbs of manner. Priscilla will, will review your homework and review other lessons as well. She will also go over adverbs of manner with you, so you can better learn that grammar point. She will give you your homework for lesson six. Lastly, Jim will have more examples of travel dialogue. You should be able to get ideas for your homework for lesson six. By listening very carefully to his video, these are the new vocabulary words about travel and sight sightseeing. Please say with me, 跟我说 tour, window shop. We like to window shop in Vancouver. Visit attractions. Attractions. There are many attractions in Vancouver. Art gallery. Art gallery. Monument. Monument. Statue. Statue. Skyscraper. Skyscraper. There are many skyscrapers in Shanghai. Bus, taxi. Here are some more vocabulary words. 跟我说 museums, museums. London has many famous museums. London has many famous museums. Stadium. Stadium. They play football in the stadium. They play football in the stadium. Store. Store. Scenery. Scenery. Canada has beautiful scenery. Canada has beautiful scenery. Waterfront. Waterfront. Seattle's waterfront is very nice. Seattle's waterfront is very nice. Train, train, tour bus, tour bus, tour guide, tour guide. We want to hire a tour guide. Tourist, tourist, travel, travel. Another word you should know is national park. America has many famous national parks. One of them is in Washington State. That's Mount Rainier. Another famous national park is the Grand Canyon, and then also Yellowstone. Let me give you an, an exercise. Let's say you want to travel with your children and grandchildren. Please use complete sentences to answer these questions. Try to use the new vocabulary and grammar points that you have learned so far. Where do you want to go in Canada? Pause the video to think about two things that you can say. Can you say a sentence using the right right preposition to answer the first question? For example. I want to go to Vancouver in Canada. I want to go to Vancouver in Canada. How about another sentence? Can you use one of the new vocabulary words? I want to go to a national park. So pause this video and answer the question yourself. Where do you want to go in Canada?
make two sentences, one of them using prepositions, another using one of the new vocabulary words. Can you answer this question? What do you want to do in Canada? Again, make two sentences using either the grammar points or the new vocabulary words that you've learned. An example would be, I want to window shop in Canada. Can you make a sentence using two or three adjectives and put them in the correct order? Do you remember that grammar point about the order of adjectives? You can say something like, I want to visit a large wax museum in Canada. Notice the position of the adjectives, large and wax. So pause the video and, and make some sentences answering the question, what do you want to do in Canada? The last question is, how will you travel around Canada? You can say, I will travel by train around Canada. So here I am using the preposition by train. I will travel by train around Canada. What about an example sentence using more than one adjective? You can say, I want to travel in our large red car around Canada. So pause the video and answer that question as well. How will you travel around Canada? This is the new grammar point for lesson six. It is what are called adverbs of manner. This table is in your book, so you can refer to that. What are adverbs of manner? Please look at this next slide for the explanation in Chinese. I'll let you look at this explanation about adverbs of manner. It's too hard for me to say this in, in Chinese, so read it carefully. Read this carefully so you understand adverbs of manner. Did you notice I just gave you an example of an adverb of manner? I said, read it carefully. The example shown here is another example. Andy did the work carefully. Do you now understand what adverbs of manner mean? From the table in your textbook and from the last slide, I've listed what I think are the more common adverbs of manner. I will say each sentence twice. Accidentally. Accidentally. He accidentally said the wrong thing to her. He accidentally said the wrong thing to her. Badly. Badly. He played badly and lost the game. He played badly and lost the game. Beautifully, beautifully. She danced beautifully. She danced beautifully. Calmly, calmly. He calmly walked into the room. He calmly walked into the room. Carefully, carefully. She carefully put the necklace away. She carefully put the necklace away. Comfortably, comfortably. He is sitting comfortably on the sofa. He is sitting comfortably on the sofa. Exactly, exactly. He followed her directions exactly, but still got lost. He followed her directions exactly, but still got lost. Finally, finally, 
she finally finished studying. Fortunately, fortunately, he fortunately kept his mouth shut. He fortunately kept his mouth shut. Gently, gently, he gently picked up the baby. He gently picked up the baby. Gladly, gladly, I will gladly help you. Pause this video and practice saying each of the sentences out loud to yourself. Here are some more common adverbs of manner. Hard, hard. They played hard and won the game. Happily, happily. He went happily on his way. Kindly, kindly. He kindly helped me with my homework. He kindly helped me with my homework. Loudly, loudly. They ran loudly into the library. Nervously, nervously. She nervously told him, I don't like you. She nervously told him, I don't like you. Politely, politely, he politely said, I don't care. He politely said, I don't care. Quickly, quickly, they quickly left the room. They quickly left the room. Sadly, Sadly, he sadly went back to school. He sadly went back to school. Slowly, slowly, he walked slowly over to her. He walked slowly over to her. Tightly, tightly, he held the baby tightly. He held the baby tightly. Warmly, warmly, they greeted us warmly. Please pause the video and using some of these adverbs of manner, make your own sentences. Let's try this exercise. Can you take the adjectives shown here? and change it to an adverb to complete each sentence. An example is he drives his car horribly. How about this sentence? When my teacher talks too quickly, it is difficult to understand him. I always study hard for a big test. Sometimes I need my teacher to talk more slowly so I can hear better. She laughs happily at my jokes. I am sitting comfortably so I don't want to move. Thank you for watching. I hope you are staying safe and enjoying our lessons. Priscilla will go next and cover your homework for last week and then also for this week, as well as reviewing grammar points. Zaijian, bye bye. 大家好, hi. 欢迎来到 to Intermediate ESL, uh, the sixth lesson. Um, I'm Priscilla. Um, Priscilla Sushelan Lausher I hope everyone's well. 
Okay, uh, I know that Teacher Jim and Teacher Warren um, covered some things. Um, adverbs of manner. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is um, <clears throat> adverbs of manner. And uh, teacher War, uh, teacher Jim covered sightseeing. Uh, so uh, his tada um, gunni talundish du ti shi uh, words and uh, how to say things when you're traveling. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see. Mm. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to do a review of your lesson five homework. I'm also going to talk about um, a little bit more on the adverbs of manner that you covered with Warren. And we're also going to review, so we'll do some Fushi Helian Shi for the Judong uh, Tsu, may, should, and must. And then finally, finally, Tui Ho, I'm going to give you the homework for lesson six. So, Wo Jiang, Wo Jiang, Gao Su Ni, Di Di Liu Ke De Zuo Ye. I'll give you the, uh, the homework for lesson six. Uh, let's um, let's start. Halama, Kashaba. Oh, let's see. Let's do it like that. Hmm. So here you have the lesson five assignment, um, and that was to write a story, a short story about a shopping trip. Um, Describe a shopping trip, and that's a uh, go. Uh -huh. um, and uh, and use these verbs. Use the simple past tense of the verbs. The to be verb, which is am, is are, and then the other words buy, choose, forget, take, wear, write. Um, so, for example, I give you an example story. Um, that story is, I'll read it again. I took the bus to Walmart to buy summer clothes for my grandson. He grows bigger every day. The day was rainy, so I wore a raincoat and took an umbrella. At Walmart, I bought some t-shirts and I chose two pairs of shorts for my grandson. But I forgot to buy a bathing suit for him. Whoops, whoops. Maybe, maybe, kanung. <laughs> I will remember to buy a bathing suit for him next time. So then your turn. So as we go over uh, what the homework could be, we'll first look a little bit at uh, the rules, the rules for, um, Simple past tense, okay? So um, what you're looking at here, zi ye mian chang de tu biao are, so these tables here on this page, zi xie tu biao xian shi le gui zi jian jian simple past tense, so that's um, jian dan to sure uh, simple past tense verb rules along this side here of the chart over here as you watch my cursor are the the words the the verbs that I suggested you use for the homework okay so these are the Jian Yi Shi Yong for the homework for your homework mm -hmm. 
And, um, and this, uh, these are in the present tense. Am is are, so that's a to be verb. And by, choose, forget, take, different meanings for take. Uh, um, where, chuan uh, yifu, and write, xie, xie zi. Okay, so, and over here, uh, this the table with, with green has the rules. Jian dan guo chu shi de hui zi. So, and you might think, so if you didn't know these words, if you never saw them before, you didn't know what, didn't know much about it, um, you might use these rules here. Here are the rules, normal rules. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, for changing these verbs into the past tense, simple past tense. 简单, 过去说. For example, you see the word buy, my dongshi, buy, that's what that means, my. Mm -hmm. And it ends in y. And you see here the rule number three. When the verb is one syllable, so iga, iga, ziin, huh? right? Iga, ziin, and by, 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 one syllable, by. And it ends in y, mm -hmm. okay? Zi wei shi, y, the letter y. Mm -hmm. So the rule says to, um, to dia, the y, to drop the y and add, Saija I E D. Hmm, and that would be this. Did you ever hear this word? How do you even say that? Buid, wide, bide. Okay, well that's wrong. Okay, so how about this word? Choose, choose, choose. Um, to choose, I choose coffee in the morning uh, and not tea. I choose to drink. Um, so it ends in, where's my cursor? It ends in E. Let's see if there's a rule about that. So here's rule number two. If the verb ends in E, just add D. Okay? Don't zi, zi wei shi yi. Zai jia di. Hmm. So what would that be? Choosed? Did you ever hear that word choosed? Well, that's wrong. Ruto. No. Rutwe. Sola. That's not right. How about, let's see, forget. Forget. Simple pass. Maybe we'll use rule number one for simple pass. You usually ping chang, tong chang. Uh, you um, uh, you add ed, ja ed. So let's see. Forget it, forget it. No, that's wrong. Okay. Take ends in e. Hmm? What should we do? Add a d, like it says here in rule number two. Don't say e. Zai jia d. Is that what we should do? Taked. No. All right. Hmm. So where, where should we just use, let's see. It's not a short vowel, not a short vowel. So, 不是, 不是, 短, 母音, 不是. Okay, so it's not, a, it's not that. And it doesn't have a Y, okay? It doesn't end in Y. So maybe we should just use rule number one. Let's see. Where? Again, no. All right. And here, finally, the word right. Right. Ends in E. Mm, and what the, what's the rule there? Add D. Write it. Again, no. Okay. Because all these verbs that we asked you to practice for lesson five homework are irregular verbs, okay? So they are bu, um, 
补归归子变化的动词，补归子补归子。So that means that means when you have irregular verbs, you you just have to memorize. Okay, 你必须背诵，你必须背诵，嗯，背诵啊，或背单词啊 ，the simple past tense， 背单词，背单词啊，简单过去式的 for these verbs. All right, so let's do lesson five together. Let's the lesson five homework together. Okay, woman, 一起做第五课作业吧 Um. So again, I put、uh, over here on this side of the screen. You see the rules for simple past tense, and there are examples.、Uh, ask, asked, move, moved. So ask, you add ed. Move is the rule. Ends in e. Add d. Okay, and.、Um, Just add d. Well, it's not finished there, but yeah, e d. And then rule number three: if it ends in y, you two d out. You you omit the y. You drop the y. Two d out, and you add i e d. Okay, so I do i e d. And if it's a short vowel, uh, 短母音 uh, stop, ah,、uh, stop. And and uh, the um. It ends in in a in a consonant. Okay, so the the uh, uh, zi zi wei shi uh then you just you double the p, two of them, and you add ed. So I add ed. So chong fu zi zi wei, chong fu zi wei, and so I add ed. So those are the rules. But I gave you a lot of、uh, words I asked you to use in the homework that are irregular verbs. So here's a sample story. So, for example, maybe you wrote this to start the homework. I, and you're going to use the word write a list of everything I. And you're going to use the word want. 我想要，我想要。Uh, and or and you're gonna share you go you go list write a list. So、um, are there any words here that might follow that are simple that might follow the rules? Yes. This word want follows the rules. So take a minute and think about how you would write the simple past. In this sentence, for this word and for this word, for this word, right, and this word, want, and actually, we just looked at right, didn't we? Okay, so yeah, this is what.、Um, so the the sentence would be for all simple past tense. 简单啊，过去式 I wrote a list of everything I wanted. Wanted, so you simply add ed. Wanted to buy at the store. Good. Let's do the next the next sentence sentence or two. How about this? I want to use the word take. Take meaning、um, 搭车搭车搭公车 in that sense. Take bus sixty two to International District. 过几期 <laughs> and then the trip,、um, uh, and this is about time.、Mm-hmm. How long it takes? Only thirty minutes, because there. And then we'll use the to be verb to talk about it. Very little traffic. There is very little traffic today, maybe because it's a holiday. What do you say for past tense? So, and. Do you think any of these are regular verbs? No. So take a minute and decide what these words should be for simple past tense. Okay. So、uh, what should this word be here? How? What is take for simple past tense? Right. I took. I took. I took bus sixty two. 
to International District. The trip took only 30 minutes, Dojo. Mm -hmm. And because there was, was no traffic, past tense for is. There is no traffic today. There was no traffic yesterday. Great. Let's do the next sentence. When I, <clears throat> and we're going to use the word arrive, um, so, da, da, mm -hmm. at the store, I uh, remember mm -hmm, that I, Wangji, well, Wang, Wangla, to bring the shopping list, right? We wrote a list list of what we wanted to buy and we forgot to bring the list oh so what are there any words here that might be um, normal verbs follow the rules verbs mm -hmm. follow the rules are the verbs that follow the rules are are um, uh, swin, swin xun, swin xun. Any of them here? Let's see. Mm -hmm. These two. Arrive and remember. So, take a minute. And what would be the past tense for these words? Arrive, remember, and forget for these sentences. Okay, here we go. I, when I arrived at the store, I remembered, I remembered, that I forgot to bring the shopping list. Okay, again, arrive, arrive is, um, follows the rules. It ends in E, so you just add D. And um, remember, follows the rules, you just add ED. Okay, and forgot is an irregular verb. 不归时变化的动词 Okay, let's do the last one. At the store, I buy vegetables, what's the past tense, and a few treats. Dianxin, it rain, shayu, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when I leave the store. Mm -hmm. Because I wear twan yifu, uh, only a light jacket, I um, get wet waiting for the bus to go home. So, uh, any words here that might be uh, following the rules? Let's see, any of them. And just one. Just one. The word rain. So take a minute and decide what the past tense, see if you can put the, uh, write down or just decide what the past tense should be for these words. Okay, so let's let's do that. Mm -hmm. At the store, I what's the past tense for buy? Bought, mm -hmm. and I bought vegetables and a few treats. It so rain, rain. Here's the word rain. It's uh, following the rule verb. Okay, it's swin xun, swin xun the dong si, swin xun the swin xun gui zi the dong zi. So you just add ed and it's it rained. All right. So leave. The next word leave. What's the past tense for that? I left. Li kai, li kai, li kai, li kai shang bian. Because I. What's the past tense for wear? I wore. Wore. Only a light jacket. I got wet waiting for the bus to go home. Okay, great. So uh, again, um, with irregular verbs, so let's look at, uh, oh, here you go. Here's the past tense for all these uh, regular verbs. And then here is um, uh, the past tense for all the verbs that were in the story, I think. I think I have them all down here. And again, with reg irregular changing verbs, you have to memorize them. Okay, that's all you have, that's all you can do. Or and practice a lot, and then you will um, be able to um, use them in conversation. Okay, so um, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Let's move on to the next, which is some review and practice. Fu Xi He Lian Qi. So we're going to, I know that uh, Lao Shi Warren um, uh, talked about adverbs of manner, and we're going to talk about it some more. Uh, so more practice. Gong Duo Qing Qing Tai Fu Si. Um, and then we'll do some auxiliary verbs, uh, the may, should, and must. But first, we'll do the adverbs of matter. Qing tai fu si. So, adverbs, adverbs fu si. We have adverbs of frequency, which we talked about a few weeks ago. And those are, are, are um, ping yu de fu si. Oh, and then we have the adverbs of matter, qi tai fu si. Adverbs of frequency, if you remember, they show how often something happens, okay? Uh, they 表示 yiga qing kuang duo jiu fa sheng yi ci. Okay, well, 只是 mo shi fa sheng de qing yu, right? But adverbs of manner, they indicate, they, as you see here, they indicate the mood or the attitude that affects how, how someone does things, how an action is performed. Okay, 是用来说明动作发生时的情形或状态。嗯,是新的心情或态度,态度. You know, I noticed that I have this word and this word, and that it's this word, not this word. So I, I got some incorrections on my Chinese written here, but that's okay. All right, so you understand. In general, all adverbs modify verbs. It's about the verbs. Okay, so fu si yi ban shi yong lai. 修饰动词, okay, and usually, 一般, 一般, uh, 通, 通常, uh, the, ad, the adverbs, uh, 不是, 通常, 放在动词或动词片语之后, usually they, you put them, usually, not always, they come after the verb when you're speaking or writing. Mm -hmm. And often, mm -hmm. so um, Iban, Iban, often they end in ly, but not always. So here's so here's some examples. So here's an ad, here's some examples of adverb of, of frequency, usually, ping chang. Mm -hmm. And an example of adverb of manner, quickly. Mm -hmm. um, quickly. And uh su de. And adverbs are usually they end in ly. So here's some examples of adverbs ending in ly. Normally, sadly, slowly, manmande, rarely, gladly. Mm -hmm. But they don't always end in ly. And, and when we looked at adverbs of frequency, do you remember? We had the words always, don't or either. And often, um, wang wang, or seldom, never, um, and, and then uh, hard um, is an adverb of manner. So there's, they don't always end in ly. But they always modify the verbs. So let's do a little practice. What I'd like you to do, you see this picture, and these people are exercising. So can you use adverbs of manner to finish these sentences these people are exercising what can you say about how they move in what way what's the attitude the feeling the tai du um, and they perform the movements how mm. so here are some adjectives here's some ways you could describe their movements calm uh, quietly, xiao xiao, ping jing, man man. And how do you turn that into an adge uh, an adverb in this case? Or mindful, zheng yin, 
very uh, careful, 小心 and、uh, the word is graceful, 优美 So how how do you use maybe use these、uh, adjectives in English and in Chinese? You have some sense of what the meaning is. How how are they? What what are these words in in Chinese? Take a minute and、um, use these words and. Described how these people are exercising. Maybe finish uh, the, um, these sentences, and you can. Zanting, shopping、uh, isha, to to do this. All right, let's let's go on. So these people are exercising quietly, maybe.、Mm -hmm. But that's a good way to to write to say that they move calmly, calmly,、um, slowly, gracefully, mindfully. They're really thinking about how they're doing the movements. They perform the movements carefully.、Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go on then to the next. We're going to do some. Go over these、uh, auxiliary verbs. These、um, 主动词 are、uh, may, should, and must. You may remember this from an earlier lesson. We went over this. These uh, uh, auxiliary verbs. These auxiliary verbs have two meanings. Okay. So the first meaning is、uh, is, is about、um, asking permission. 请求允许允许 Especially may, how you use it is may I go? May I leave the room?、Um, yes, you may leave the room,、um, and that that's the the sense that this word may has when it's、uh, used as an auxiliary verb in a sentence.、Um, may I eat dinner now? Oh yes, you may eat dinner now. Um, may I have candy? Yes, you may have candy. Okay, so ching、uh, chou,、um, 允许允许 Okay, should is in this sense here is more like a jian yi or ying gai de something like a, a doctor、uh, would would say to you.、Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so here's a Um, here's a, something that doctors advise me: "You do not eat fruit, do not drink water." All right, so that's that's advice. You should you should eat more、uh, fruit and and drink more water. You should. It would be in this sentence if if a doctor was saying this in English, the doctor would say, "You should eat more、uh, fruit and you should drink more water." Must finally the the must word is is this and it's kind of covered up part of it's covered up but it's uh it's uh um 必须必须 or 需要需要的 uh which in other words you have no choice you have to you must you must leave the room um uh you must go home um so no choice 没有啊顺子没有顺子 So that's that's this is review. This is fushi of a、uh, of one meaning,、um, uh, the one meaning of of these words. They have a second meaning, have a different sense. So the the second meaning, the r is、uh, is about guessing, taitsu. So the word may is is like、um, something has a meaning of kunum. Kunda, it might, maybe. Kun. So here it's like fifty-fifty. If you were gonna guess,、um, it may snow today. It may be a good day to stay home. It may snow. It may not. I don't. I don't know. It's winter, so it may snow. Don't. Is don't tian, but.、Um, It doesn't snow every day here.、Yeah. Okay, should is another guess, 
but um, it's still kunung de isa, but um, he li de tai si, then hu chue ding. You're not exactly sure. So here's the percentage, 70 to 80 percent. Mm -hmm. She lives nearby. She already left the house. She should arrive soon. Should be soon. Good, you know, it's a good guess, a good guess. Uh -huh. All right. But must, um, like before, is, is more um, certain, okay? Um, and that's so. Um, so it's snowing, traffic is jammed everywhere. She must be stuck in traffic. That's why she hasn't arrived. So those are the meanings, the two different kinds of meanings for these auxiliary verbs. Let's do some practice. So here are some sentences. Um, and using the meaning of, of uh, knung, and guessing uh, or uh, which sentences would have which of these auxiliary verbs. So zanting uh sha and 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 try to do this uh this this exercise and then we'll we'll look at the answers. So I'll, but I'll read this up. Okay, let me, see. according to the weather report, it rained tomorrow again. Uh, the next sentence is, I'm not sure uh, what to do. I like my boss, but the pay is low. I, what word goes there? Start to look for another job. Mm -hmm. The police visited her at work. Hmm, it, be something serious. So, okay, let's see what the answers are. According to the weather report, um, it should rain tomorrow. Hmm. It should rain. According to the weather report, it should rain. So, the weather report, um, these people study the weather. So, maybe like a doctor, they have a good idea, not. They're not certain, but it's a good guess, a good guess. So I'm not sure what to do. I like my boss. The pay is low. I may. Okay, you see they're not so, you know, it's kanung, kanung de isa. The police visited her at work. So it must be something serious. So I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Is that okay? Let's go to the next one. The other meaning for these auxiliary verbs: may, should, must, um, and that's um, the meaning of, of asking permission and ching chou ching chou or. Uh, the the meaning of uh, a suggestion, yin gaida, or bi shi, shi yao de. So here's the sentences. And this first sentence is, I must tell you, for those of you who are studying the citizenship exam, for the citizenship exam, this is in your book um, about selective service. So maybe you've seen this sentence before and you know the answer. So in your book, it says, it is in the U.S., in the United States, it's the law. All men between 18 and 26 years of age register for selective service. So which of these words goes there? May, should, or must. The next uh, sentence, during flu season, doctors say we may, should, or must. Get plenty of rest, eat right, stay healthy. And finally, sun. Okay, so arzu. If you have finished your homework, 学完了你的作业, finish your homework, you watch TV. So, dancing, shipping, xia, and try to do these. Or maybe you already know the answers. I'll wait a second. Okay, let's do it. 
In the US, it's the law. All men between the ages of 18 and 26 years of age must. Okay? Meiyo suanzi. Meiyo suanzi. They must register. Okay. During flu season, doctors, so this is a gen e, isn't it? Doctors say gen e. Uh, we should get plenty of rest, uh, mm -hmm. get plenty of rest, eat right to stay healthy. And then finally, sun, um, so nida, nida haizi, nida arzi. If you have finished your homework, you may, so this is about permission, uh, about permission. You may watch TV. Okay. Good. So finally, homework for lesson six. Okay. Okay, the the you could do yeah. So I want you to use both adverbs of frequency. So those were for uh, a prior lesson, prior lesson, and adverbs of manner to make sentences about your travel hopes and plans. Okay, she only um yu de fu si he. Ching Tai Fu Si Zhao Chu Guan Yu Zhao Chu Guan Yu Yu Xing Ji Hua De Ju Zi. So sentences, Ju Zi, mm -hmm. about Guan Yu, Guan Yu, Yu Xing, and uh, so Lu Xing travel uh, plans, Ji Hua, Ji Hua De Ju Zi. Okay, Yu Xing Ji Hua de Ju Zi. Well, let me show you an example of uh, a few sentences that you might write using adverbs of frequency and adverbs of manner to talk about, to talk about Guan Yu, Lu Xing Ji Hua. Okay, here you go. Here's the example. And the adverbs are in red. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to visit Morocco. I worked hard and carefully saved money. One day, a teacher kindly noticed my interest and told me about an opportunity. Before traveling, I gladly studied the language and learned about the culture. My trip was exactly as I had hoped. I enjoyed every minute and when it was time to go home i sadly sadly said goodbye and now i often think about where i will travel next all right so the adverbs of frequency there's a couple of those always and often always right here often mm -hmm. frequency how often something um dojo <laughs> something happens and then the adverbs of manner that are in this, uh, these sentences are these words here. And these are these adverbs of manner. Again, uh, Teacher Warren, Lao Shu Warren uh, talked about those, uh, and they're in your textbook. Um, so go ahead and, and try, to, try to write um, a few sentences about travel plans where you want to go, and, oh, and how you feel about the things that you do to prepare. And then, uh, take care of your health. Qing jui bao zhong sheng ti, and sha zi jian. Okay, thank you, and bye-bye. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Jim Robinson. And I'm going to do a short segment here for uh, week six on air travel. As the slide here indicates, this is a picture of a SeaTac International Airport. It's Mount Rainier in the background, and uh, that is an Alaska Airlines 737 taking off. Alaska happens to be Seattle's hometown airline, by the way. So let's get going here. When arriving at the airport, there's some key expressions that you really need to know. Key, key travel words. So for starters, domestic, international, ticket, passport, 
visa. So when you arrive, you have to know where you need to go, whether it's a domestic check-in, an international check-in, you'll need your tickets. <clears throat> Most of the time you will need your passport, whether it's domestic or international these days, and, uh, and you'll need a visa if you're going to a foreign country. When you do arrive, you want to look at the, the big screen as you come into the main terminal or into the terminals. You'll have arrivals and departures and gates assignments. So make sure that you're looking at the departure. Departures are not the arrivals. You'll get very, very confused. So arrivals, departures, gate. The next sentence, the next bullet here is your luggage. As you're coming to the uh, ticket agent, you'll probably have either carry-on luggage, a briefcase, or a luggage claim tag. Now, when I traveled a lot for business, I tried to do carry-on. And it was usually carry-on and a briefcase, but you still needed to tag them with identification. But for those of you who are, you know, going on longer trips and you need a big bag to check in, you need a luggage claim tag. Okay. Once you get out to the gate, you'll hear words from the ticket agent like, the plane is on time, about, almost, approximately, and that's awful. Now, that's awful would come from you if it's really a couple hours late and you're missing a connect. When you get inside the airplane, you'll hear things like, fit under the seat, overhead compartment, have a good trip. So fit under the seat would be for your carry-on luggage or your briefcase. Overhead compartment is also the same thing, your carry-on luggage, your coat, whatever, and just have a good trip. When the plane arrives, generally when you get off the plane, first thing you're looking for is baggage claim area. When you, uh, if you're going through passport control or customs, you probably would have filled out a form already, but the agent there could say, why are you here? And you would say to be on business. Tour or passing. So once you make it through that process, you might have to declare some, some duty on something that you're bringing in, a carton of cigarettes on the next sentence. So Pay duty, carton of cigarettes, something like that. The verbs you need to know, uh, you'll need to know these verbs no matter where you are or what you're doing, but is to go, to need, to visit, to take, to do, and to make. Okay, I'm going to go through this again, maybe a little faster. Just review the key words for the second time. So when you arrive at the airport, first bullet here, you need to know whether it's a domestic or an international flight. So the key term domestic there, international. Tickets, you'll need your tickets. Passport, visa. So you need all of that prior to arriving. You need to know all of that prior to arriving to the airport. When you get to the main terminal, of course, you see a big reader board up there that says arrivals and departures. So we're at the second bullet here, second main bullet, and gate. Make sure, unless you're picking somebody up, you want to look at arrivals. But if you're the one that's traveling, look at the departures. Don't, don't get them confused. You'll find yourself in big trouble. When you get to the ticket agent, you'll have, you'll be asked about carry-on luggage, briefcase, luggage, clean tag. So when I traveled a lot to Boeing, I had a lot of carry-on luggage. I preferred that. And then I put it in the overhead bin and then I keep my briefcase with me. But a lot of times, if it's a long trip or a vacation, you need to check your luggage. Once you get out to the gate, the ticket agents, you know, as, as people are lining up to get on the plane, might say, the plane is on time, 
on the plane, agent saying you can fit things fit under the seat in an overhead compartment and to have a good fit. So when I uh, travel, I try to put as much as I can in the overhead compartment of the dress. So for some food I brought on or some gifts. So fit under the seat, overhead compartment, have a good fit. When the plane finally arrives, generally the first thing you're looking for is baggage plane area. The next thing, if you're arriving internationally and you're going through customs and passport control, they'll generally ask you, why are you here? And the answer could be a number of things, but one of them could be to be on business, tour, or passing through. And that would be transit as well. If you're bringing gifts that require duty, you need to find a place to pay your duty. The verbs that you pretty well need to know when you're when you're traveling is go, need, visit, take, do, and make. Now, actually, you need to know all those verbs anyway, especially when you're traveling. Okay, so just a little bit of the order while you're here. You arrive at your arrival, have your ticket agent. You go through TSA security. You go to the food court. If you have time, you can buy something or you can do shopping. On board, you have your carry on overhead bin. Then, when you finally get to your destination, one of the first things you're looking for is baggage. So, in review, you arrive. Ticket agent, TSA security, food court, food court and shopping, carry on overhead bin, and then baggage on the deck. Okay, so here's a short dialogue. So I will read through this twice. Agent, hello, your ticket please. Juan, here it is. Agent, are you going to Beijing? May I see your passport? Here you are. Agent, how many suitcases do you have? I have three suitcases. Agent, do you have any carry-on baggage? I have only one briefcase. Agent, would you like an aisle or window seat? I'd like an aisle seat. Agent, come on. Here's your boarding pass. Flight number 108 to Beijing, row 19. Fine. Thank you, agent. Have a nice day. Okay. I'm going to pause. And why don't you read through this on your own? And uh, I'll start in on the second time. You can stop your program. Okay, here we go again. Agent, hello, your ticket please. Here it is. Agent, are you going to Beijing? May I see your passport? Here you are. Agent, how many suitcases do you have? I have three suitcases. Agent, do you have any carry-on baggage? I have only one briefcase. Agent. Would you like an aisle or window seat? I'd like an aisle seat. Agent. Fine. Here's your boarding pass. Flight number 108 to Beijing. Row 19, seat B. Thank you. Agent. Have a good start. Okay. On to the next dialogue. I'll read through this twice. For those of you who went to last week's class, you'll be familiar with these characters, Lucy and Hui. So, here we go. Lucy, what are you doing, Hui? I'm planning my trip back to Thailand for the midterm break. Lucy, 
That sounds exciting. Please. Not really. I must do a lot of traveling to get back to my home. Lucy, really? Why? How will you get home and how long will it take? Please. It will take more than 24 hours because I have to use many different types of transport. Lucy. Will your family meet you at the airport in Thailand? Please. No. I must take a bus from the airport to my home. The bus is very uncomfortable. Lucy. That does not sound nice. How will you get to London Heathrow Airport? I think it will be cheapest to use the coach. And I have a lot of luggage. Lucy. Okay. Usually you can pay extra to take more luggage. Hey, really? That's good. You know where the bus station is from here? Lucy, yes, you can walk there. It only takes you five minutes. Please, should I buy a ticket before traveling? Lucy, buy your ticket online if you can. It's always cheaper. Please, I want to travel direct to London, so they have direct buses to the airport. Yes, it's about two hours. Perfect. I will take the bus. I was thinking about a taxi, but it's simple. Okay, I'm going to pause here. You know, 15 seconds, you can stop your program and please read through it. And then I'll read through it for the second. Okay, we're back. So, this is the second reading of this dialogue. Lucy. What are you doing, Cree? Cree, I'm planning my trip back to time for the midterm break. Lucy, that sounds exciting. Cree, not really. I must do a lot of traveling to get back to my home. Lucy, really? Why? How will you get home and how long will it take? Cree, it will take more than 24 hours because I have to use many different types of transport. Lucy. Will your family meet you at the airport in Thailand? No, I must take a bus from the airport to my home. The bus is very uncomfortable. Lucy, that does not sound nice. How will you get to London Heathrow? I think it will be cheapest to use the coach. But I have a lot of luggage. Lucy, that's okay. Usually you can pay extra to take more luggage. Lucy, really? That's good. You know where the bus station is from here. Lucy. Yes, you can walk there. It will only take you five minutes. Three. Should I buy a ticket before travel? Lucy. Buy your ticket online if you can. It's always cheaper. Three. I want to travel direct to London. Do they have direct buses to the airport? Lucy. Yes, it takes about two hours. Three. Perfect. I will take the bus. So I was thinking about a taxi. But it's expensive. So in this situation, they are actually in London, and she's going to fly from London to Thailand. That's what they confusion. But the issue here is just listening to the bus. Okay. So there are two links here. Uh, and they are, they are videos of two national parks. One is Olympic National Park, which is really just across Puget Sound here, the ferry boat right away. And I think once things sort of let up around here, you know, with the coronavirus, um, that's something you could go do. You probably all need face masks, but uh, Olympic National Park is well worth seeing. The other video is about Denali National Park. That's where Mount Denali is. It used to be Mount Denali. And um, that's also worth, worth seeing, but you would have to fly it there. That would be a major vacation. So I hope this dialogue has helped you. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.